This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. There's a thin line between heroism and madness. Here the line fades to nothing at all. This is a world of capes and lunatics. And nothing is off limits. <laughs> Good uh, evening, everyone. It's our end of the year special. I wanted everyone here, but at least we got Charlie. Yes, pretty man. Uh, Lilith, of course, our usual. Kristen's here. Yay! 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 Thank you. Dr. Kristen, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Better than Professor. Oh, a few people. Yeah, way better than the last professor. 10 minutes. Oh, Lord. Uh, anyway. Anyone can be a professor. It takes work to be a doctor. It's the end of the year. Oh, unless you're a podiatrist or a dentist. There, I said it. <laughs> oh, bird. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's the okay, I'm not so. <laughs> End of the year special. Anything can happen, or other words. Because it was, bitches. Capes and Lunatics starts right now. That's right. Most of our drops are Charlie Esser drops. So, yeah, I already said Charlie, Lilith, Kristen, I am Phil. I wish Will and Matt could have been here, but... Oh, because I had a whole thing today about how... Okay, so here's the thing. So there was this conversation during Quantum Mess about whether or not prisoners have internet access. And now, of course, as someone who has friends and loved ones who have been incarcerated, I'm very versed in the conversations about the prison industrial complex. And the fact of the matter is, is that, yes, you can listen to podcasts if you are in prison. Now, here is where it gets complex. Um, you cannot bring outside electronics into prison unless they're contraband. Now, of course, contraband is a thing. They exist. And so we may have some people listening on contraband. But more commonly, what you will have is people who will have purchased a pad or a phone at extreme expense because it is profiting the prison industrial complex um, and that they then have data uh, availability again at an exorbitant rate that then their loved ones have to pay for just to have conversations with. So it is entirely possible that someone in prison does have access to podcasts, but it is unlikely that they're spending their bandwidth on getting our podcast when, in fact, their family is who is paying for this. And honestly, it's kind of sad at the end of the day. And honestly, it'd probably be even sadder if we actually have prison listeners, because that means they're choosing us over their family. Because <laughs> they've decided that their bandwidth is better used. You know what? Let me see what Phil and Lilith and Charlie and Kristen are doing. <laughs> yeah, I'll find out what my kids are doing later, but let's let's let's... Let me find out what the ideas are right now. All I need to know is the library still a thing in prison. That's all I need to know. Um. Well, some prisons have libraries, sure. You know, you know, it's the good prisons. Yeah. Well, you know what? Well, here's the thing about prisons: they don't want to spend money on something that's not going to get used. So we talk about like weight rooms at prisons. It's because a lot of prisoners like to lift weights. And you got to blow off steam, and it's better on the weights than on the guards. Well, exactly. For each and other, yeah. So, yeah. You know, that was that was how my my mom once explained white color prison to me was like, well, you know, you know, you know, and more. Yeah, they more have cable stuff. TV and stuff like that in white. Well, color it's like they have tennis courts because that's that's what they play. They play tennis. The other prisons have basketball courts because that's what they play. Uh, I don't think that works. Shout out to Kill this- Cupcake. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just saying, but yeah, so, but there is internet access in prisons. We could have internet. If you are a prisoner listening to us right now, uh, thank you. Um, email us. Slash this debate. <laughs> yes, you know, talk to us. Maybe I'm wrong about what your bandwidth limitations are. Maybe you actually, so no, I have adequate bandwidth, but there's still limitations that, that it's actually down. For example, it might be much easier to download a podcast because it's a static data load to download, then doing a FaceTime with your loved ones, which is much more expensive. So they say, no, we listen to all the podcasts because it really doesn't cost us anything. But yeah, FaceTiming is really uh, a pain 
And of course, you know, prison industrial complex. Oh, can I talk about my second favorite Christmas present? Because my first favorite Christmas present was something Phil sent to me. (laughs) Oh, yeah? Yeah. That was my first favorite present. But the second favorite present, I'm I'm drinking it. It's uh, Danny DeVito's Limoncello, which apparently is discontinued. Uh, It's super hard to find, but it's good. I don't know why it was discontinued. I hope there's not like urine in here. (laughs) It is Denny DeVito. <laughs> but yeah, I was just like, yes, I, I've i been looking for this and I actually ended up getting it for Christmas and it's really good. Nice. Well, very good. So what was your favorite present? Something you got me. I, I'll go grab it. Be right back. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, boss. <laughs> anyway, so what'd you get her, Phil? Because obviously she's going to be back with it in a minute. It's a reading material. <laughs> oh, it's, it's okay. Yes, and it's Marvel. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, so that's um, a shock that she was like, "It's my favorite." You see, what um, so that me is actually. Oh wait, let's see what we got here. See, Phil's good. He likes to give. I'm, well, I'm, well, I gave her a little extra because one, it was her birthday. Two, and two, oh, she yeah. was very generous with me on my birthday. So no, no, no. I, uh, trust me, Phil. I'm not yeah. judging. I was actually saying you're very generous because you're a wonderful person. He is, cool. and he's yeah, so I mean, funny. I'm just glad it wasn't a Ben <laughs> Riley story. <laughs> but yeah, this is Quasar, obviously. <laughs> What Don't be hating on Quasar, man. man. The quantum zone. Oh no, He's... you know my favorite quantum dro- quantum zone drop. Don't you? Don't you dare. Quantum uh, tentacles. <laughs> you know, here's what I'll say about uh, Quasar. It's coming to the MCU. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I totally get that vibe, especially with the Captain Marvel thing. That whole debate, which might be Miss Marvel instead. I find that very compelling. Listen to Super oh. Connectivity this week for yeah. the Marvel discussion, amongst other many other things. Well, no, but you know what was pointed out to me on the internet recently was that, you know, of course, we, we all know that, of course, Professor Vaughn has already been called out. But more to the point, Project Pegasus has also been called out. Yep. Um, in the original Avengers. So it does not surprise me that they might come full circle in Electric Boogalore. <laughs> um, that's Avengers 4, for those who don't know. Uh, Avengers 4, Electric Boogalore. Um, they're going <laughs> to... <laughs> it, it, as far as I'm concerned, it is. <laughs> until, they come up with a, until they release the real title, it's Avengers 4, Electric Boogalore. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think it would be perfect to bring that full circle and have Quasar be a character in that, you know? Yeah. If nothing else, because, of course, it certainly shows the fact that, you know what, Thanos, there's a whole universe of people that you just murdered, and maybe they're not, like, half. You. <laughs> well, there's half a universe of people you just murdered. It's like, <laughs> we all like to think about, like, Earth, but, like, literally there's, like, the Kree... And the scrolls, which are races of superhuman beings with like superpowers that are like maybe like mm, you kill you, you got rid of my Aunt May, you know, like not everyone had, not not just Peter had an Aunt May that you just just dusted Thanos. You you went and you went and messed with Ronin's family. <laughs> so Ronin the accuser, the guy who said, "I don't listen to you, Thanos." If his mom's got all dusted, oh, you know Thanos is going to have it get thrown down on him because, you know, not for nothing. It's a whole freaking universe. Not even just one galaxy. There's a universe. There's like 18 other galaxies that are like, what just happened? And they're going to go go pond on that guy. He did not Amazing. think it through. <laughs> I'm just saying, he did not think it through. How to get the drops. Somebody else talk. <laughs> All right. I know. I was, well, I was going to say, what was everyone's favorite movies and TV shows? Kristen, I know what you're going to say TV-wise, probably, right? Uh, Yeah, I mean, honestly, Titans was the only TV show I watched this year, so I'm not much of a, t- uh, not much of a TV person. Uh, so it was pretty good. I mean, I guess it was my favorite 
I mean, I guess it was my favorite, but it was also my least favorite because it was the only one I watched. Why don't they just do the Grayson show already? <laughs> yes, we would say that, though. <laughs> yes, we like, hmm. <laughs> it's like, like the majority of it was I centered was around. The- never, never would have suspected you guys. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I like, not really unbiased here. But I mean, the season finale was basically, most of it took place in Dick Grayson's head, so it's like... Yeah, pretty much all of it did, yeah. And let's be honest, he's really the only character we care about. Like, let's just be, let's just be really honest. Everybody else has gotten, like, the living crap kicked out of them over the internet. You know, the only I thing mean, he really got ringed about, ringed about was, a uh, out of context, F Batman, you know. Oh, yeah. But that was actually kind of funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, are you saying folks funny. don't like Garfield? Yeah, see, no, I think actually all the characters are pretty good. Just on just, Mondays. Many of them haven't gotten that much attention. Yeah. Exactly. I was actually kind of upset that the episode that was called Coriander, like, I didn't learn anything about her that I thought was really all that big of a deal. She's an like, alien. Oh, we didn't know that. Yeah, I was like, obviously she's an alien. She shoots fire out of her arms. Like, I've she never kind of been a meta human in this universe. But, but I mean, like, I've never met a human that does that. So it was like, woo, she's an alien. I was like, duh. I mean, plus, yeah. most people watching the show already know that she's an, an alien, so. Yeah. I mean, Honestly, it's that's bit- debatable. I don't know what DC Universe is going for. Like, I just don't. Like, I just feel like, I don't think maybe hardcore fans are their demographic. I don't think they know what their demographic is. It, yeah, it's a could, mess. <laughs> that could be. I do like the streaming app, though, uh, because I like that it has a lot of the old stuff on there. I'm trying to watch Super Friends. But I'll admit, Super Friends is so bad. It's so bad that I had an episode of Super Friends on, and I turned it off to grade papers instead. Like, that's how bad Super Friends was. Okay. I, I would rather no, read no, Was it Wendy papers. Marvin's Super Friends, or was that's it uh, Dan Marvin? I don't know. One, 1973? It was yeah, that's, one. that's Marvin. That's, no, that's the Wonder okay. Twins. 73 yeah, is Wonder oh. Twins. One, yeah, sorry, it's Wonder Twins, yeah. Okay, see, so yeah. You gotta go back to Wendy Marvin. <laughs> you gotta go old school with the Super Friends. You gotta go Wendy Marvin. And the dog. And the dog. dog But I feel like maybe I just haven't hit their stride yet because I was cracking up. The one episode, something happens. Batman comes in and he's like this very serious face. He's like, you know what we should do? I'm thinking like, yeah, Batman's going to lay out some Batman wisdom. His answer was, we should investigate. I was like, well, no crap, Batman. Like, duh. (laughs) Yeah, well, you got to remember, this is back when the iconic Batman was... Um, Adam West. Adam West. Thank you. I was about Whatever, to say. I do love uh, that show. I, I always say show. Bruce Ward, which is wrong. It's <laughs> <laughs> all combobulated in there. <laughs> it's not a good brain. It's all messed up in there. But I fell out of a tree once, and that, I blame everything on that. Um, That's no, fair. but yeah, it was Adam West, and so that was the iconic Batman at the time. So dark, gritty Batman was not a thing. Which it is fun. Bat- I actually don't like Dark Gritty Batman, which is kind of my issue with Titans. I'm like, why is someone getting murdered every show? Like, this is a little bit too much. Because they're in Detroit. I'm sorry, Charlie. I had to. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm that part of Detroit. And actually, a fair amount of the show is taking place in Ohio. And we're not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> we're not that gritty. <laughs> yes. Um... What I will, like I said, having watched like half of an episode of Titans because I fell asleep before. Tristan's watched more of Titans than I have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have watched all of them. <laughs> well, good for you. I mean, honestly, I want to watch them. I, seven days is not enough to decide if you want to keep a service. That's, That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> you know, you're going to give me a service and say, okay, you get seven days for free. You know, it's like, well, okay, I. Your one show that was like my draw, I watched two episodes of it. I'm not 100% sold on you. Uh, bye. You know, I mean, that's what happened. Okay, here's an issue I had when I was going to buy everyone's Christmas presents. I was looking, I was like, okay, can I do like a subscription? Yeah, at least for some of you, do a subscription to Marvel Unlimited. You could, there was like no way to get that. They used at, to, but they I took looked, it away. I know. Then I looked at DC Universe. Is there a way to get this? And no, there. Did they take that away too so quickly? I don't know. I you... saw that you, because I got gifted one. I'm tr- oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm, try- I'm trying to remember. It, was either, it either wasn't there or it was very convoluted. And I was just like. Yeah, it's oh. very convoluted. Yeah. I well, just... I will say this, because Phil is letting me pick my own gift. Through the wonderful gift of cash. 
uh, <laughs> this is going to allow us to restart the Gamma Cast in the near future. Oh. <laughs> With uh, the Incredible Hulk returns and possibly Trial of the Incredible Hulk, if not the uh, death of the Incredible Hulk. And my hope is, my dream is, to start looking at all of the 70s Marvel Universe, which I wish was interconnected, but it is not officially, although only in my canon mind. Can you, can you come in 67 Spider-Man 2 if you can find it? Um, you know what? Here's the thing. I like the live action, not the cartoon. Oh. The cartoon Spider-Man. But that music is so iconic, Charlie. Oh, it's it's totally. iconic. It doesn't mean it's good. And uh, you know, pumped. Do some nice The music is good. I would rather. That's our territory, like, Philip. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's right. That's right. If I was going to do Marvel cartoons from the '60s, I would do uh, the the ones that use the actual Kirby art. Oh, from, yeah. The, 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 Iron the Man old Captain Thor, America Captain and Namor, Thor. Yeah. From the Rainbow Bridge of Asgard, where the mighty... Yes, that's not as iconic, but I get you. There's a drop. Yes. That's fair. You'll find our... <laughs> so what were your favorite TV shows, Charlie? Uh, oh, well... Okay, oh, so, damn. <laughs> so, okay. So I have two shows. Okay, I'm going to have to say The Good Place is my favorite TV show this year. With just hands down, no argument. The Good Place was just the best show. Oh, you mean the people who ripped off Lilith? <laughs> oh, Mark Harmon. No, they just had a common co- general consensus. No, that they, just Mark referenced is that, they just referenced that Mark Harmon could get it. That's not a ripoff of Lilith. That is an homage. <laughs> if it was about getting Mark Harmon, then it would be a ripoff of Lilith. But, um, she said general <laughs> consensus and they agree good. with me. Yes, no, they refer- no, they're fans of the show and I appreciate that. You know, Phil, don't alienate our fans by saying, oh, you're ripping us off. It's like, no, they're honoring us, Philip. They're honoring us, Philip. You should not be so harsh on these things. Um, well, then, well, then show us that you are listening. There's a, there's some more of our catchphrases in your okay. shows. Like, I would yeah. love for Maya Rudolph to be on this podcast. I would die, yeah. actually, probably. <laughs> you know, just throw oh. in some of our catchphrases. Like, I'm not a fancy man. Yes. Well, you know what? They may do that, Phil. I can Phil. see that happening. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Phil? Just just antagonize our fans because now they may do it. They may not do it just to spite us. But already in the script, was like, oh, Philip was being such a jerk last night. I know, wasn't he? Let's not do all the references to this sh- to this show we love to listen to because Phil is being mean but to Charlie, us. Phil is yeah. Janet. <laughs> He's our Janet. I haven't watched the show, so I don't know what that means. Wait, wait, is this a reference to the good place? Yes. Oh, oh, you you should watch the good place. It's a great. What's it come on? Um, it's on Hulu and and a NBC and okay. It's on a lot of things. It's only thirty minutes too, so you can like thirty minutes. It goes like that. Okay. If you if you like um. If you like medieval morality plays, you might enjoy it. And if you okay. don't like those, you might uh, also like the fact that it does a lot of uh, uh, deep philosophical dives, which is a lot of fun. And it's about, you know, trying to be a better human being, which is an is interesting thing. Is this the one with Ted Danson in it? Yes. This is the one with Ted Danson. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. I've just still okay. never watched it, but I have heard of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you don't like Ted Danson, I'm not going to hold it against you. No, Ted Danson. Ted Danson. Ted Danson. George Costanza. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? He did blackface at a, at a at a thing, and he lost a lot of fans in that moment. So I blame it, Whoopi for that. She should have kept him in check at that particular. It was time. well. It was absolutely Whoopi's fault because Whoopi finds that funny. But it's like when you do like an inside gag, but you do it on national television. It's like oh. You don't get the joke because you're not in the group. Oh, that welcome to 1991. <laughs> I'm old, Philip. I'm sorry. I remember. I'm the second I was oldest. Shut up. In 1991. Okay? I remember that, Philip. So you know. I grew up. Oh yeah. But I, I'm a huge Whoopi Goldberg fan, so I, I didn't see it live necessarily, but I do understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to explain to my son recently that I was 18 in 1992. <laughs> and I was, explaining, I was explaining to him how I liked the Animaniacs, and I said, well, actually, I was in the 20s, I was in my 20s when I, when I liked it. I said, you were 20? 
<laughs> and they came out. And I was like, yeah, I was actually 18 in 1992. So that's. I was just right. born like this, son. I just came out like this, fully formed, like Zeus. <laughs> <laughs> That's what all kids should think about their parents so okay. they know better. Oh, okay, yeah. Athena was the one who sprang fully formed from the head of Zeus. Yes. Not just, Zeus did not. Just popped out of your mom's head as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying head. Yes. <laughs> anyway. That's where Athena came from. That's where but, Athena came from. <laughs> yeah. Oof, yes. Well, I mean, arguably, he just ate her as a baby and then he she gestated it inside of him. And they grew, popped out of his head. I mean, depending on which myth you, 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 you read. Yeah. There are other ones where she actually was born, but then he devoured her in the way his father had devoured the... The Greeks his, and Romans were weird, man. So rude. Wow, a lot of, lot of He's situations. He's kind of a terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> Zeus is not a nice guy. But, you know, not for nothing, if there's one thing you can say about Marvel Comics, they kind of lean into the fact that these elder gods are not nice people. <laughs> Odin! <laughs> Not a nice guy, you know. That's why you always have to sacrifice to them. I mean, they expect something in return. They're not yes. just going to do nice things for free. Oh, for what it's worth, I'm really looking forward to the um, this show coming out next year. Um, oh gosh, with uh, Steve Buscemi and um, Daniel Radcliffe. Uh, that sounds interesting already. <laughs> yes, it's called. Oh, I want to call. It's called. Oh, answered. No, it's not called Answered Prayers. It's something like that, but essentially okay. that'd be a Steve Buscemi is God. And okay. he's going to destroy the universe and Daniel Radcliffe's in charge of the Answered Prayers department. Miracle he, workers. A miracle workers, that's the one. Thank you, Lele. <laughs> um, I'm really looking forward to it because it does seem like this is like this is like cable TV's attempt to be the good place, and I'm like, oh, this sounds good. And I got <laughs> Steve Buscemi, which I'm on the board there. And they make a little point about Steve Bush because he says, you know, you know, a lot of expenses they would sacrifice a goat to me. And the, one of his like other angels says, but I thought you found that gross. He's like, well, I did, but it still the thought was nice. <laughs> and I can see that. I can see that. I love that. Honestly, the clips are good. Seeing Daniel Radcliffe really move on from Harry Potter and actually be an actor is fun. Even though he still has to live in the in, in the in the mystical realm because he's always going to have to. Because yeah, that's just it's you know true. he's always gonna have to be as I guess something has to be magical here. Even like when he did the Swiss Army man still Or horns too. Or horns, yeah exactly. They won't let him do I would like to do something that isn't that. It's like, no, you don't. Well, it's because he's not, he doesn't have the typical leading man good looks and he's not, it's too late to be the next Tom Cruise where you can be five foot eight and an action star. Yeah. (laughs) He's also got a rounded face and it's Tom Cruise for what it's worth. He has a really cut face. He's got a cut face. So it's like, yeah, that guy, you can put that because you don't know how tall a guy is on that. Box is an apple box, but everybody watched Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah, I mean, no, he's a little. We all think that freaking uh, Thanos was like six two. I mean, really? No, it's no. He's like he's like shorter than Tom Cruise. It's like it's, but he plays big well. That's the thing. It's like uh, Josh Brolin plays a tall guy well, and that's why you get to play tall. If you can play tall, you can be tall. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe doesn't play tall well. That's the problem. He, it's actually probably Amazing. he's actually uh, Daniel Radcliffe might be like six seven, but we don't know because he plays small very well. No, I've seen him in person next to Elijah Wood. They're short people. Oh. <laughs> they they belong in the in the Shire. Let me just say that as a person <laughs> five foot three, it's okay for me to say that. That's fine. No, there's nothing wrong with the Shire. They, you know, not for nothing. The Hobbits were really, as they say, the wisest of them all. Which is what Douglas Adams always said, you know, that, you know, um, when humans got out of the tree, this was a mistake, you know. Um, <laughs> so the dolphins just, well, actually it was the dolphins that said that, you know, they just mucked about in the surf all day and had fun. And, you know, that's why they thought the humans were stupid, because why did you stop doing that? That was good. Um and, you know, it's like, yeah, they, the hobbits, they live in the Shire and they're not causing problems. Like all the freaking humans and trolls and drawers and everyone that's trying to get something, trying to get up on stuff. And it's like, no. Just, 
just sit in the shire, you know, smoke your smoke your whatever you're smoking in the shire, and have a have 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 some eleven Z's before lunch because you don't want to go into lunch hungry. But then you'll eat too much. So have some eleven Z's, have your lunch, and just relax because it ain't no thing. And yeah, the hobbits were the wisest of them all, and they're just always having to deal with the fact that everybody else wants to destroy the universe. Hobbits just want eleven seeds. Are you a burden, man? I'm I'm definitely a hobbit then. <laughs> Does what, Phil? Uh I love to sleep and drink. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Any other show besides The Good Place you want to? Yeah, about? what's your other show? <laughs> oh well, the, the other show was The Orville, of course. Um, yes, the Orville coming back is Sunday. Yes, fantastic. yeah, it's back tomorrow night. I cannot wait. I'm going to live tweet it. Um, the Orville is so good. I mean, it is it is what Star Trek should be. It's what humor. Star Trek at its best is. Okay, because okay. it is about people living in space. And all of the nonsense that comes with living in space, it, especially because it's like, you know, the thing about living in space is like you live in a small town mm-hmm. and you can't get out. <laughs> you live in Ohio. You know what that's like. Well, we always make the joke about Michigan is that they like to keep people in Michigan in Michigan because, of course, we're surrounded by water on three sides, and the first thing you see when you get out is Ohio. So it's like most people just go turn around and go back. Uh, <laughs> hey, our roads are better though. Yeah, honestly, Ohio. You know, my nephew, I love him dearly. He's uh, um, a structural engineer, and he lives in Ohio now. And I, you know, I have I have buried my hatchet with Ohio, though I will still make crack wise about it because that's just how I was raised. You know, uh, it's a generational thing. In my uh, day, we could make fun of Ohio. It wasn't needed some <laughs> horrible thing to make fun you of still, Ohio. You still can. We're not that great. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, I, I've lost my train of thought. The Orville. Uh, no, uh, living in a small uh, small town, you know, you have these people that you have to be around all the time. And you have to interact with them. And then you in- infuse, which is sort of this irony and this parody of Next Generation where Suddenly, it's not just a Navy ship, which was the original Star Trek, which is you know a bunch of dudes on a ship, and we just have to deal with being on a ship. Now it's like, oh, and we have kids and a nursery and all this stuff, and so and and we have a bar. For some reason, we put a bar on our ship, which makes sense in the idea that people do need to blow off steam, they do need to go to the bar, they do need to eat, and all this kind of stuff. But it becomes this social quality of the story that becomes this extra layer that is really enjoyable and it is it is so well written and so funny without being jokey it's one of these things where okay we're gonna well we can talk about Holmes and watson in a minute but oh, um, must we <laughs> that'll be on the worst side we'll talk yeah we'll, we'll talk so about that I mean, worst movies yes i haven't seen it yet and i i was so looking forward to it but the idea is is that you know this is so when you when you say it's a it's something from Seth MacFarlane, you go, oh, well, that's going to be stupid. And you, you know, get a name right. You got a name right. Seth, well, I'm going to get to it right because Seth MacFarlane is kind of the anti John C. Riley. Where if I said, hey, there's a new comedy with John C. Riley, he would say, oh, I want. Oh, I gotta see go see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Especially if you have them with Will Ferrell. They are like one of the best, well, up until now, one of the best comedian <laughs> duos in Hollywood. Okay, yeah. I was actually going to go the exact opposite way and say that John C. Riley and Will Ferrell should never, ever be in the same room at the same time. Because John C. R- no, I saw Talligate Dig at Night. They are no, not good Step together. Brothers, what are you talking about? <laughs> they are Step not Brothers good is together. A classic. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, that's what got Holmes and Watson being lit. You see, because uh, I knew watching Telling Day and Nights, these guys are not good together. These guys are not good together. They, and I will fight you, nerd. They are not good together. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, and. John C. Wiley by himself, and actually Will Ferrell by himself, too, except for Land of the Lost, although Land of the Lost wasn't the worst thing I ever saw. Um, <laughs> are 
good in the and John C. Riley. Here's what I'll say: John he C. Riley. Think about it too, though. That's the thing that a lot of people don't know about John C. Riley. I, that's all I know about John C. Riley. That's because you're old. Young people you know, don't know that. Mr. Cellophane. <laughs> that should have been my name. Mr. I mean, I'll tell you the first thing I ever saw John C. Riley in: Boogie Nights. <laughs> he was great in that too. Honestly. Uh, no, John C. Riley can do literally anything and and uh, walk hard. Yes, <laughs> that is like the epitome of 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 comedy. Walk hard is better than Spinal Tap. Fight me, nerds. Fight him, nerds. <laughs> Fight me, nerds. Yeah, no, walk hard. And Charlie Esser. And Charlie Esser. That's looking the two E's in the middle for these dudes. Okay. <laughs> Damn, what kind of apple juice are you drinking tonight? I believe it's hard. It was, uh, <laughs> <no>. It's <laughs> hard, my drop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but no, but because here was always my thing. I've always felt that when John C. Riley and Will Ferrell got together, they're always punching down. I mentioned this to Phil a couple podcasts ago that when they're punching down, it's like, oh, hey, hey, hey. Guys who like NASCAR, those guys must be idiots. So let's make a joke about how big of idiots they are. Uh, oh, guys who live with their parents into an adult age, they must be idiots. Let's make, make a joke about how big of idiots they are. This is the first time that they're playing privileged adult white males living on their own who are idiots. And I said, that is going to be them punching up at the aristoc uh, aristocratical universe that would let an idiot Holmes and an idiot Watson be seen as the savants of the universe and so wonderful because of their pro proper white privilege. And now it was like, oh, no, we don't like it. Which makes me wonder if my maybe it's just that all you critics are just like, oh, this is a little too close to home. They're saying that people that are educated are idiots. I can't cotton that. That's um, it's been a really long time since they've done something together, too. And th there's a time and a place for, for you know, a John C. Yeah. Riley and Will Ferrell movie. Much like, you know, I don't think that Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law could do another Sherlock Holmes movie and it still be well received and make money. Yeah, that, mean, that time has passed. Everybody sees him as Iron Man now, so yeah. it's done, is done. Of course, now Jude Law is Captain Marvel, so. <laughs> oh. They make team up again. Oh, my goodness, you're going to have that crossover. Just do that de aged. Uh, I was gonna say, you're gonna have to de age him for 94. <laughs> gonna de age. Uh, uh, um, hey, I know Sir knew who Tony Stark was, so maybe that's how he knows. Well, that's what Charlie said is uh, Samuel Jackson's gonna be uh, get the award for best animated character for Captain Marvel because he's gonna be de aged through the whole movie. Since <laughs> the I don't think Samuel Jackson's aged since like freaking the Star Wars prequels. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Look at Glass. That man is aged. Oh. How is he supposed to be like that? Yeah, is he supposed that's to look old now? Yeah, that's, like, that's old makeup in Glass. Honestly. Yeah. No, no, that's actually what he looks like. <laughs> no, he does not. We're going to have to check the makeup budget on Glass. <laughs> it's tale. a dollar. I'm telling you, it's a dollar. It's, it's, it, he, no, that's no. I understand. Sure, you really enjoyed class. Like, oh my goodness, I don't gotta like act like I'm an action star. I can just sit in this chair and speak authoritatively. No oh. wonder Patrick Stewart wanted that role. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be Any other TV shows you want to talk about, Charlie? Oh uh, well, those are my big two. Except, except of course, the Perino Venture Brothers, which is always great, but it's like in its hiatus again. Yeah, that, that, that they definitely don't make enough episodes. <laughs> yeah, well, they, they 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 work hard on making good episodes, and they're always good when we like when we get them. It's like Steven Universe, you know. They work hard, they make good episodes, and so you, the 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 cost of that is you don't get your immediate gratification. Boo! It's twenty eighteen. That's all life is about, Charlie. <laughs> don't you know anything? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I get. Growing up in the 70s, like I did, and I understood that, you know, commercials were there for you to pee. And you had to understand that we got to we gotta honor our sponsors. I was mom great, and dad's remote control. You got to respect this great love boat content that we're enjoying by enjoying the commercials or at least letting them exist while we go pee. That's all I'm saying.
Yes. You want your? I want no commercials. I'm going to put the click the skip I'm ad button on that. Nine and a half hours. Thing. You are damn straight. Mm. Oh, did it in school now. Do it again. One thing I discovered today was <laughs> Thug Notes from the Wisecrack uh, Network. Oh, um, those are good. Yeah, yeah. With about yeah, the now, uh, literature. Yes, now yeah. I'm a big fan of uh, Garrick's Wormulon from um, yeah. Earth and Cinema, and they have a uh, it's called Thug Notes, which is uh, uh, oh I can't remember Doctor. And again, I, not, they call him a PhD. I don't know if he is, but um, uh, I don't know. You know what? He might be though. He might have a that actor might have a degree in English literature. Literature. Yeah, you never know. Right, yeah. yeah, you know. So it's like. Um, but he does sort of a, he's sort of a, a, a you know, a, a gangster style character. And then he does reviews of classic literature, which are fantastic. And yeah, he's really spot on. He is spot on. And he's just fantastic. I just discovered it today. I was like, oh, they've, they've added a new thing to my Amazon feed from Wisecrack. And I was like, oh, it's season six. <laughs> like, oh, oh my God. I thought that, I thought that like Wisecracks just had, Pitch this deal to Amazon. I was like, no, no, this has already been on YouTube for years, and I just haven't seen it yet. Oh yeah, it's on YouTube's, Amazon now. It's on Amazon now. It's part of the Amazon Prime app. Yeah, it's what? it's it's. Yeah, I yeah, only really see it on YouTube. Yeah, well, apparent. Well, now it's on Amazon because this is the first time I saw it. And bad right. on you, bad on you, YouTube. Your algorithm didn't suggest this to me. That is pretty yeah, the algorithm has been messed up for the last two and a half years, so welcome yeah. to the party, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, well, huh. You know, it finally Fox, affected you. <laughs> Fox owns YouTube. I wonder if now Disney owns YouTube or not. I wonder if that was no, part of the Google deal. Google owns YouTube. What are you talking about? Fox bought YouTube a while ago, didn't they? Not this universe. You well, know who Fox doesn't own YouTube? Me. Us. <laughs> No, I know Fox bought MySpace. So maybe Disney owns MySpace. <sighs> Alexa. Who owns YouTube? YouTube is the CIA. Alphabet. Larry Page. And Sergey Brin. Okay, there we go. There you go. Nice. There you go. I'm, I'm, I'm confusing YouTube with MySpace. They're from the same era. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> I don't Back remember. When YouTube was a dating site, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, I have a long list. So, Phil, do you have a long list? <laughs> She's on. Uh, let me check my number one dad. Uh, <laughs> where I, go? I told Luca he oh, must not oh, Philip, apparently you're the number one dad now? I have proof. They're going to they're gonna duke it out in April. Cage match! Yeah, I'll film it for you. <laughs> nice. Marcus of Queensberry rules, my friend. Marcus of Queensberry's rules. Uh, I'm just, I was just looking. Yeah, I, I've got lists and lists. Uh, all the movies and TV shows that were out. Oh, hey, pick I, two. I know what, I know one, I know one thing that all of us have seen. Uh, DC animated movie, Gotham by Gaslight. Oh, yeah. We I did didn't say the worst. We're not talking about the worst yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bang. Oh, sorry. And actually, I haven't <laughs> seen that. So, um, what? I guess Lewis was not a fan. I I feel like I thought we did a live commentary, but yes, maybe not. Okay. Well, I we might did. have not been there for it. I don't you were you were there, Charlie. I, I was getting, oh, he only oh. watched the first seventeen minutes. That's the one. Did I fall asleep during it? That's entirely possible. <laughs> yeah, he only watched the first seventeen minutes. That's why he doesn't remember it. Saturday morning. Okay. Is um, uh, yeah, or maybe I just blocked it out. But yes, I am off. Awesome. It's like it feels like fifty issue, fifty episodes ago. Don't worry. Um, okay, so Gotham by Gaslight. I'm guessing that that was. Uh, Why are we talking about this? I don't know. <laughs> don't bring it up. All four of us saw it. So. Okay. Well, I'm guessing that that entailed. You know. Oh, you know, I do remember things now. It's like coming back to me. We did do a live commentary on it. Yeah. Yeah, Cockney accents. The Jack the, the Ripper. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think I mean, uh, was was Commissioner Gordon Jack the Ripper in that? Yeah. yeah spoiler alert. Yeah, in the movie. <laughs> oh, it's sorry. Been over two weeks. That's the new spoiler. <laughs> in the movie version, yes. <laughs> no, yeah. honestly, this had to be at least a year ago. So um, yeah, it was. Yeah, Fifty episodes ago. Yeah, we do one yeah, every week. So it's like, you know, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> yeah, Commissioner Gordon was Jack the Ripper. It's just as disappointing now then as it is for you to hear me say it now. Yeah, um, actually, that was kind of that when I saw that because I saw it much later. Actually, I watched it on the DC streaming service. Yeah, I don't. And I was like, yeah, what? okay. See, thank you for dredging up these horrible memories, Philip. <laughs> I didn't even mention Stan Lee's death yet. Come on. Come on, we gotta get through TV first. I oh, haven't seen the body. No body, no death. <laughs> I don't know. Don't he was pretty bad. old. I think it was this time. Uh, it, it, you watch. Oh. You back in the next movie. You watch. No, I didn't. Sorry, I didn't mean like. I just said just because you didn't see the body, I mean, you know, like old people die. <laughs> what? All right, all right. Lilith, whip it out. What are you? What are you waiting to talk about? <laughs> okay, so my favorite TV shows: Killing Eve. Super good. Sandra O. Oh, you should watch it. Uh, season two of Atlanta was amazing. Amazing. Oh, yeah, if you haven't favorite. seen Atlanta, oh my god, please, please, please watch it. It is so good. It stars Donald Glover, aka Childish Gambino, Charlie. They're the same person. So you tell me. <laughs> Again, haven't seen them in the same room. That's all I'm saying. Uh, um, oh, I agree. Like those Batman shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with Charlie about the good place. You got oh, it's such a good binge though. But then, like when you get to the end, you're sad because that's what happened to me. I had to wait like two months for the next season to come yeah. out. So pace yourself on that one. And Barry, oh my god! Like I kept getting recommended Barry, and I was like, but it's Bill <laughs> Hader. I don't like Bill Hader. I hate SNL. Why are you recommending this to me? Is that on HBO? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's here's what I'll tell you. I've seen two episodes. It's really good. The premise I, is everything. You know, the, the hard thing for me is, first of all, I have to go all the way to HBO. It's like two icons over on my on my, <laughs> on my on my TV thing. It's like, oh, all the way to HBO. Oh, the then when I get to HBO, it's like, okay, how do I find uh, Barry again? No, Barry is like the first. Uh, Barry is so good. Barry, you know what? Barry is, and again, it's funny because I'm big into the Kaminsky method. Me and my wife watch that. On Netflix right horror. now. And the Kaminsky method is like Barry, but without the killing, at least the first two episodes of, of Barry of Barry that I've seen. And it is just such a fascinating idea. And yes, I feel the same way about Bill Hader that you do, Lilith. So I mean, his name is appropriate. He's like one of the he's like when you have a guy named Dr. Nefarious Except that's a D. and then it, and then he becomes evil, it's like, yeah, Bill Hader, yeah, everyone's gonna hate you. Uh, he's dealt with that his whole life but he actually really sells that character in that and honestly when I actually try to think about gee when have I actually really hated Bill Hader I find it's much harder to find like a specific thing I hated about him um, ever done on SNL <gasps> no cause he did he did um, back when he was alive who was the guy who used to do the rest of the story um, what the, did what the weekend. Uh, and now you know the rest of the story. Oh. He was the uh, oh, oh, uh, Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey. He did. He does a Paul Harvey that is really good. And because I do have such a deep love for Paul Harvey in a weird way, as a kid growing up listening to Paul Harvey, because that just shows you what of an old nerd I am. Uh, when he would do Paul Harvey, he really does a great Paul Harvey. <laughs> so I always had a weird spot for him as Paul Harvey. And aside from that, I mean, yes, I know. I know. Shout out 2018. (laughs) Um, uh, But Bill Hader is not a guy that I can honestly say I dislike. Aside from the fact that, you know, he does have a super punchable face. He does. He's a guy that that you look at and say, I really should hate you. I don't know why, but he does seem like there's something wrong with him. And in my caveman brain, it says, ooh, there's something wrong with that man. We must punch him in the face. Uh, it's the symmetry of his face. It just, like, invites you to just kind of want to... You know what it is? Although, ironically, <laughs> I think he has a very uh, plastic face. I think he's, like, kind of a perfect face, and that's what bothers me. It's a face Wait, you think his face is too perfect? I think his face is hyper. There is super symmetry in a face. It gives yeah, you that yeah. uncanny valley kind of feel. So exactly. that's, yeah. well, that's where it, that's what that's what this is. That's symmetry. Well, no, so not so super good. symmetry though. You have to have it's, it's a certain ratio of symmetry. It's not if you if you saw a perfectly symmetrical face, it would freak you out. 
It's just yes, it's it not because the way that we process in our, our he eyes looks like an android. That is what that is the what uncanny the valley effect. Yes. He, yeah, he looks like an android. He looks like he should be playing, you know, Tweaky in the in the new in the Buck Rogers uh, revamp. Although he would be fantastic as a new Tweaky in the Buck Rogers uh, rehash. I think he would be fantastic in that role. Give me Hollywood on the line. Give me, give me David Walker. And then, he loves David I don't know. Does that look super symmetrical? To you? <laughs> yeah. See, that's does. a bad picture. Like when he has his makeup and he's in like actual like camera. Like there's a difference between being like photogenic and being video, you know, videography. Yeah, he there does look. He does look weird. He looks weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll take it. Find a movie poster of Bill Hader. You're gonna see what we mean. And then the, <laughs> there's just one more show that I have to like tell everybody to watch, which is the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Like. It's oh, so my many horror guys. And they have so many Suspiria, which I love with the original Suspiria. The remake's okay, but original Suspiria, go watch it. But they have so many little nods to that, Rosemary's Baby, stuff like that. I was just, like, really impressed. And then they also keep kind of, like, this original Sabrina vibe, too. So, yeah. yeah. And, Lilith, you lied to me. You said that the Christmas special comes uh, in the middle of the season. That's actually a postseason Extra episode, like a Doctor Who episode. Well, because it's only it's part one of the season, so like part two comes out in April, so technically it is the middle. It's still okay, part that's one. Like how the seasons year. work, and I don't like I don't like On people Netflix, saying that's that. How it works, part one and part two. Yeah, I don't like I don't like people doing that. That's I don't well, agree. That's how they do it now. The ranch has me all freaked out. I'm like, why do you call it part six? It's season three, part two. Stop it. <laughs> yes, that's what Netflix does now, though. So okay, that's fine. Um. <laughs> Although, speaking of which, no Christmas special for Doctor Who this year. Now we're doing New Year's episodes. Because, because, buck the, six year because the social justice warriors hate Christ and Santa. <laughs> oh. One Christmas, Fox News was right. Who'd have thunk? I mean, I don't watch Doctor Who, but I mean, isn't that kind of, uh, I mean. It's a tradition. Well, first female <laughs> doctor. First female doctor, now all of a sudden they're not doing a Christmas episode. No, but they're doing a New Year's episode, which is oh, actually yeah, it's about New Year's. I'm gonna be drunk and hungover and fat. Maybe you like you weren't on Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm Maybe not that way every day. day. What do you mean? That's the target demographic. <laughs> I know. I can't watch Doctor Who when I'm drunk. That's like the one show I don't watch when I'm drunk. You never know when those damn really? angels are gonna come back. Out of my mouth. <laughs> Just saying. Never know when something creepy might happen. Uh, Anyway, I, I'm excited, and they're just doing all Doctor Who's now on uh, BBC America right now, which is fun. Oh, nice. So, yeah, if it's you want to go catch lost the one of the other dozen Doctors they've had in, like, the last two years. It's, like, weird. Like, it used to be, like, you had a Doctor for, for like, years. Yeah. Like, a generational Doctor. And I was like, oh, we went through, like, the last six. It's like, doctor, the Doctor who just, like, burned through his last, like, six regenerations just for, like, nothing. It's like, you know, we like went like freaking 50 years with the last six. And now you're just going to, oh, we'll just burn through them. We don't need them. Well, you know, those 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 newfangled British actors are so hard to deal with nowadays. Yeah, you know, I like back when 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 an actor was happy to have a regular job. It's like, really, I get to come here every day and act? I'm good with that. You know, it's not like he had to be, not for nothing, it's not like they, they were asking these people to be the companions. The companions, I get why they left. The Back in my day, like, these British actors were all downtrodden and happy to <laughs> be paid pennies. They were happy to get the work. <laughs> um, well, no, all actors are happy to get the work. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, think. well, you would think, but then they don't. It's like, and I don't get that because it's not like you have to do the same thing every They write new episodes every week. It's not like you're just doing one character in one play. I could get like, oh, I'm tired of playing Hamlet because it's the same play every time. But like, oh, well, I, get, I have the to... name of that play. Shame on you. That's that's the that's the Scottish play you're talking about. Lilith. <laughs> Come on, get oh, your get your thought. get my your thought. theater it's... mythos right, Lilith. I'm sorry, this is really good. It's the it's Scottish strong. play you don't. Re- <laughs> that's why they stopped making it. <laughs> you know what? You might be right. Because <laughs> most people are like, oh, lemon cello, what a lovely little. It is a strong and then, and then grandma's getting run over by reindeers, and this is what happened. Isn't that the isn't that the bad stuff happens? Drink, Lil. You know, you drink it, and then every time you wake up, you're 
boyfriend has like a bloody nose or something. No, no, no. That would no. be Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink brown liquor anymore. <laughs> I Sorry, do not want to. First off, I do not want to even think about Lilith being an abusive drunk. I would like to think that I'm really she. Bill knows this about me. I'm Please, clumsy. yeah, say clumsy. So, so make that make that explicit in that story, Bill. Because now, really, now people yeah, accidentally fall into people and push them into walls. Right I get now. it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta say no. Lilith accidentally bumps into her boyfriend, who then falls into a falls door. down the stairs. Yes, I get it. <laughs> yeah, Which you is know, pretty it's amazing. Like, Considering I'm five foot three and he's six foot three, so that's pretty well, you know, well, no, well, look, that's just basic physics. That's that go go juice. Gravity, you're hitting him at a weak spot, and that tall. Oh, she's in the middle weak spot. Just fall down like a house of cards. Come on, basic physics, Lilith. Basic physics. Every man has a weak spot. So, Phil, let's talk about your TV shows really quick, and then we can move to movies. Why? So you can roll your eyes at me, Lilith. Judge you, I promise. Well, the one I will say I think has improved over the last season or two is uh, Legends of Tomorrow. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe it's Matt Ryan as Constantine. Okay, thank you. Yes, I agree. it's fun. <laughs> it's 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 the one show. It's you know what it is. It leads it's into the, the skid. It's the Gwen. <laughs> it, it absolutely turns into the skid. It is the Gwen Pool of the DCU. It is saying, you know what? We know this is all hilarious. We know this is all not well written. We're turning right into the skid. We're going to go with it. We're going to say it's fine. It's all good. And honestly, I love Legends of Tomorrow. Because it's, 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 it's a show for fans in the sense that it is a show for fans of the show. Because if you liked what they did before, this is like all that and more. And it's just playing with the idea of the DCU and just playing with the idea of it's a stupid universe. It doesn't make any sense. And we're okay with that. You know, the big, the worst thing you can ever do with a universe is try to say it makes sense when it doesn't. Making sense spend, is overrated. Well, it's not that it's overrated. It's just like you have to go in no, with that is. if you're intentional. Yay, Kristen's about to get her first drop. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> No, so let me give you. So J.R.L. Tolkien, like, wrote a whole freaking language for that nonsense. Um, like, because that—that's a place for your nerd drop, Phil. Um, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like, okay, so he wrote a whole language just because he wanted things to be internally consistent. Fine. Um, if that's your thing, then that's your thing. But the fact of the matter is, if you're you shouldn't try to make something that wasn't conceived to be internally consistent to be internally consistent. You should just embrace, like Doctor Who. Doctor Who is not in any way, shape, or form internally consistent. It is very much a show that Alan Zays <laughs> right, into, right into the maw of a gaping something. I don't know, but it's going there. Yeah, but has anything and, that's been around 50 years ever been consistent, you know? It could have been. They chose consistent. just not to make it. So. Yeah, it's like, so, and you compare that to Star Trek, which is, like... Depending on which series and what you want to believe. And then they reboot. Well, from, and, from, from the standard broadcast series, the Heisenberg compensators compensate just fine, thank you. <laughs> and they were willing to say, you know what, we're going to we're gonna have at least a little hand wave him here, a little hand wave him there. But we're going to have this be a consistent thing. Um, Star Wars, maybe not so much, but, you know, that's Star Wars. Um, yeah. It's because George Lucas just can't, he can't abide by death of the author. He just, he can't do it. <laughs> he always well, is just Well, you know, Lucas, oh. has his, Lucas has his he's, own thing. He's almost as bad as J.K. J. Rowling. Fight me, Harry Potter nerds. You know it's true. <laughs> Uh, you know what? J.K. Rowling wants to write murder mysteries, and she figures maybe eventually that Harry Potter will die. But you can't kill fandom. That's that that was that was J.K. Rowling's first mistake, thinking you could kill it. You can't kill it. You can only make it stronger. So true. <laughs> I know the hip language. Although she is trying to kill the Harry Potter fandom with Fantastic Beasts franchise, which, by the way, is one of the worst movies I've seen this year, but we'll get there. <laughs> so I hear. So I hear. Uh, 
Talk mm-hmm. about not even trying to be internally consistent. What we'll, we'll get them. So yeah, well. finish your thought. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. This is where this is where Lilith is gonna want to smack me. You know what? Five seasons in, I still love the Flash. That's fine. Yeah, no one's gonna show. fight you with that. And and seven seasons, I still love Arrow. Well, that's just ridiculous. Stop Why did you stop reading? I'm lying for the views. He's lying for the views. I'm not. I'm listening to you for sure. Shame on you, sir. Okay. No, hey, okay. Hey, hey, even though Legends wasn't in it this year, that crossover was good. If you like Legends Google wasn't it, day, you just didn't know it. What? Gary doesn't count. Oh yeah, Gary was there. Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that the last episode of Legends was them acknowledging it and basically explaining why they're not there because their timeline has been destroyed, which is the entire reason that the monitor has to try and say, you people who are destroying the timeline, the entire multiverse is collapsing in on itself. I have to find one of you people that can survive this nonsense. And that, and they wanted to set up already for next year's crossover crisis on Infinite Earths. Well, yeah, but it's all because of freaking legends because they keep on rebooting the timeline and creating alternate universes. <laughs> you don't change the timeline. You just create an, another alternate universe. Never go full you, timeline change. <laughs> you can't go full timeline change. That's the basis of temporal dynamics. You can only go back. When you go back, the timeline you came from must still exist. Otherwise, you couldn't have come from it. So think about that for a minute. You can't come from the future and go to the past and change the past unless your future existed. You want to talk paradoxes? That's your paradox. If there's no way to go back in time, which in not for nothing. Well, when you're in a time machine, or you were sort of in a temporal bubble. You well, can, okay, you okay. You answer. want here? Okay, listen. Oh no, it's on. Listen. First wait, off, wait, I'm almost out. Wait. <laughs> Let us wait. You gotta keep the bottle off screen next to the glass so you can refill. Now, let me explain a little bit of quantum. Yeah, little, why don't you have the IV dynamic. by now? Just time is a dimension, okay? Which means that the universe in which we are in moves along the dimension at a rate of one second per one second. We move along. Um, there are various temporal anomalies about how fast you move within a relativistic space, yada, yada, yada. But as a result, in the past, for a past to exist, it is not your universe. Your universe has moved on within the timeline. What is in the past, if there is a past, is another there universe. Be a past. Is no, another all, universe. Time is a social construct. Don't buy into it. No. <laughs> time is a dimension of relativistic physics. Okay. So that point in the past is, if it exists, another universe that is exactly like your own, but at a different point in time. Meaning that essentially at that point of time inception, there is a constant repeated case of universes being created. You are in the universe that is moving along the time dimension in this line. If you go back in, if you go back along the timeline, you're just going to be in another universe now when you go to that universe you can make a change and that will make that universe's future be different you're basically when it universe. gets to your point but you're moving back to your universe or, although ironically if you go back to the point in time which you're left you're actually just jumping into the universe that was just behind your universe that if someone else had changed would have been a different change as well so you're looking at distinct bubbles of universes within a progression on a line of time. So that's why you can't go back in time and change things. No, nope, I don't you do believe your... you. I agree with Futurama. You can be your own grandfather. <laughs> Talk about inbreeding. <laughs> I just well, love that's to all... make that Futurama reference whenever I can about time travel. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes. Well, you know, we all did. <laughs> anyway, the crossover was, was cool. We got Batwoman. <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe, it's was nice. maybe it's time for movies. Maybe it's time for movies. Chris, I'm guessing you saw some movies this year. You know, you didn't get the chance to watch TV. Uh, I did see some movies, but you guys probably saw more. I don't know. I mostly go to. The, I don't actually have children, but I take my neighbor kids to the movies. So one of my favorites. Oops, sorry, my cat is. Uh, uh, one of my favorites was Teen Titans Go to the movies. Yes! 
<laughs> I thought it was okay. So there were a couple like obviously stupid fart jokes that were in there for the kids, but I thought it was pretty funny, and I had a lot of uh, good good laughs. And they did have some of those like multiverse. Can you go back and change time? Uh, sort of things tying in with what we were talking about before. But I really enjoyed it, and I thought it was one of the one of the better superhero movies of the year. Definitely one of the better DC superhero movies um, of the year. No argument there. So I was a fan. I was a fan. In fact, I yeah. got the Blu-ray for Christmas, so I'm going to watch it again soon. <laughs> hey, aren't you um, No, that, that's a really... I, honestly, I will say I am 100% agreeing with you. That was a fantastic superhero movie. Um, I say it was a fantastic movie just in general. In my opinion, I love I love the Teen Titans Go. Um, yeah, it's quite in general. Hilarious. I know I do. Well, I mean, every once in a while episodes, I'm like, yeah, but most of the time they're pretty funny. Well, well obviously, well, hey, what? Sh- it's it's a very aggressive schedule. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it's a very aggressive schedule. Sorry, that's a TV joke because. If you, oh. if you watch the TV show, they actually make reference to it. It's a very aggressive schedule. Not everything can be a gem. Um, but, uh, <laughs> no, I love Teen Titans Go to the Movies. Uh, it was fantastic. It really, and again, like you said, it addresses all sorts of timeline stuff. Um, yeah. I was talking about our universes. Comic book universes operate in a completely different schedule. Oh, yeah, I don't no, know. I know. It's called yeah. Force. <laughs> well, you know, so essentially... There is a there is a idea. So if you want to work with this idea that you can go to the past. So what you can do, if you put yourself in a time bubble, as it were, you could that could affect the rest of the universe. You could make the rest of the universe move backwards in time as you remain still and followed it along, arguably. Um, and that would be what a time machine actually is. So you move your universe backwards in time. And then you can then affect that universe in it. Now, if there are other universes behind you, goodness know what what, what effects that's going to cause. Because um, obviously, love- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't want to risk it just because obviously that's something I'm going to think about. Don't um, you know that's other- happening? That's why we have Mandela effect. We have a traffic jam back there somewhere. <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on that. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Mandela effects. I actually. Knew I was jumping between universes long before that. Okay. It's like, ever since, it's like, no, that was someone else in that movie. It's like, no, no, that's who is in that movie. It's like, are you sure? It's like, yeah, here's the thing. It's like, well, that's not what my memory says. So I'm well, I'm well versed in the fact that my memories don't match reality. So, and it's not just because I'm stupid. Oh. <laughs> Not just, it's partially, but not just. Anyway, but no, Teen Titans Go to the Movies was a fantastic film. I love that. And Nicolas Cage got to play Superman. I know, yeah. Finally! He was all, yo, he was big this year. He was in Titans of Superman, then he was in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, yeah, it's what, the Cage response. Honestly, <laughs> not for nothing, I'll be very sad if it happens, but I would not be surprised if Nick Cage dies next year, because he just fulfilled <laughs> his two dreams. Oh, no, he fulfilled his dreams. He fulfilled he his dreams. Left to live for. Yeah, yes, he, has like, to, I, he has to make Mandy too. So no, he cannot. Not allowed. Okay, well, I'm just saying he played Superman and Spider Man. What more do you want in life? He wants it all. He wants his vineyard back and he wants to not be bankrupt. That's what he yeah, wants. He, you know, well, he shouldn't have bought Fair. the Grand Forest Cold then, okay? That's a whole other, another franchise, freaking. That's Paramount. Why are you going to Paramount when you're already in Warner's and, and, and Disney? And Jurassic World reference. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Trying to throw the jack back there. A nice little hat trick. <laughs> okay, anyway. Uh, what else did you like tonight, Kristen? Let's see. Well, I did also uh, like Spider Man uh, into the Spider Verse. Yes. Although, okay, this is my only question. Maybe you guys know more about Spider Man, but as soon as I watched that movie and I found out at the end that Miles Morales' dad's name is Jefferson Davis, I was like, who greenlit that? Why does he share the same name as the president of the Confederacy? That just felt not right, in my opinion. What's going on with that? Okay, so the answer to that question is, if, if I may, Yes, please. I'm wondering. Um, 
It's keeping me up at night. <laughs> well, first off, his last name was Davis. His first name is Jefferson. Yes. Um, within, and actually it's, I guess it's Jefferson Davis Morales? How does he have the last name Morales if his Ooh, father's name is his mother's, mother's name? You think his mother's name? No, oh, guess they're not hitched. Oh, there's a whole lot of story going on there. Okay. Um, but if his last name is Davis, and, you know, Jefferson might have been his mother's last name. And it's not an uncommon thing to name your child after your, uh, with your mother's maiden name. Um, especially when it's a name like Jefferson. And, you know, it's entirely, it's entirely possible as to who greenlit it. Who knows? That might be in the comic books because it was written by Bendis. Bendis. It was. It was, written, it was in the comic books. I, as soon as I was done with the movie, I checked it out on Wikipedia. Yeah, it's Bendis. I, was yeah, like, I think so. I think that name actually has family connotation for him. Okay. Yeah. If I remember right, it's been a while since I've done my. Uh, I feel like this is going to be funny things by a historian because I texted my friend. I was like, "His dad's name is Jefferson Davis." She was like, "What the hell? Why would they do that?" Uh, I'm guessing, if I'm going to go out on a limb, I'm going to say because he's a big fan of Dukes of Hazard and wanted to reference Jefferson Davis Hogg, uh, whose brother's name was Abraham Lincoln Hogg. Because the two Hogg children were Jefferson Davis and Abraham Link Lincoln Hogg, and they were the exact opposites. Abraham Lincoln Hogg, when he was that in that one That sounds like a Bendis thing, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It, no, that's what I'm thinking. It sounds like a really Bendis thing. So I'm guessing that basically... He has a brother named uh, Abraham Lincoln, and you'll see him later, and he'll be Well, evil. no, the father's name wasn't Abraham Lincoln, so we're just going to destroy that theory right now. Yeah, his brother's you name know was Abraham, Maybe he right? changed his name. Maybe I would. Someone. If my parents named me Abraham Lincoln, and if I was an vampire slayer, I told yeah. you. Maybe look, out for the, look out for the Prowler, or, a.k.a. John Wilkes Booth. Yeah. Not for nothing, I didn't even pick that up. I didn't even realize his, his dad's name was Jefferson Davis in that. Yeah, that's what I said. You gotta run these things by a historian. That was a very that was my main takeaway from the movie. <laughs> She's like, it keeps me up at night. <laughs> oh, you. oh, you're home now. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, it sounds. You like know, my boyfriend actually didn't like into the Spider Verse, and we actually got to a fight about. He actually he, like admitted it to me today, and I was just like, "Get out!" Did you push he him down? Like, did you he push him he down didn't the like it. Yeah, he's like, Wait. "It's a kids' movie," and I'm like, "Yeah, kids' movies are awesome." Have yeah. some damn sense of wonder. <laughs> there wasn't like what? There wasn't enough Excellent. violence or anything in it. I mean, I, I was yeah. like, "You watched the MCU." What are you about. I'm so confused. What did he think? Okay, you know what? Do you not think everyone was can better handle or something? Spider Ham. No, I'm gonna say this. Not everyone can handle Spider Ham. Not for nothing. They should have gotten John ha John Ham to play Spider Ham. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I like his suggestion that they should have had Billy Crystal as Spider Ham. Honestly, guys, that would have been fantastic too. Honestly, there's so many people. What what is his name? Mulvaney. Mulaney, yeah, John Mulaney. Mulaney, oh, yeah, Mulaney. He was a fantastic Spider Ham. I actually will go see him in the Spider Ham spin off because he's pitched it to Sony and they'll do anything. <laughs> to keep that Spider Verse alive. Yeah. Venom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're, we're not going to talk too much about that. No. But, um, it was okay. Uh, but no, uh, Mulaney. No, I mean, Mulaney was great as Spider Ham, but there's so many people that, if, like, if you fan cast Spider Ham, I don't think Mulaney is the first guy you go to. I think you do want to go to someone with a little more gravitas, exp expressly because it is such a silly character. And to cast Mulaney as that silly character, I think, makes it more silly, which is not a bad thing, but it is going to get put you in that position like your boyfriend where he feels it pulls him out of the cinematic experience. Let's not talk yeah. about Lil Hellfire's boyfriend's position. <laughs> Shut up, Philip. <laughs> Lil <laughs> Hellfire is allowed to have boyfriends, Philip. What? Look, we all think our little girl's great. dating, and I can't handle it. Yeah, you can't handle it, Philip. You gotta grow up, grow up, <laughs> Philip. Love is gonna date people. She's gonna have relationships. As long she's as she gonna comes drink home, alcohol me, and maybe even dance you, after mom. two in the morning. I'm gonna say it. Love may go to a place that has dancing after two in the morning, and she may take off her shoes and dance. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> It's okay. You nice. can't protect Remember when this town used to dance? 
You can't protect your How do you guys know Footloose is literally my favorite movie ever? And I've been obsessed with Kevin Bacon since I was like eight years old. Who told you? Who told you? Oh, Footloose? Well, you know, well, you got to kick off your Sunday shoes. Man. Yes, I like uh, literally obsessed with Kevin Bacon. It's, it's, okay. Me. I'm not obsessed uh, with Kevin Bacon, so. but. The new answer to great, six, no. six, the it's, new six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, and, 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 as Arnold has told us, it is the greatest film ever made. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, you were, you were. You see, see, look, you're secretly an MCU fan. He, he told us something. You just don't want to admit it. He told you're us like, Kevin. Like, closeted. It's like I love it. I love it. I, I told you guys I love it all. the movies that I have seen, which I love all three Iron Man movies, which is fine. Yeah, I love Black Panther. Yeah, and I think Ant Man and Wasp is okay. Um, I don't yeah. know about Black Panther. I don't think that the guy, who is the guy that plays Black Panther, is good. Okay, I think that the guy, who, who is his partner's name that does all the the weird flashback narrations? I think he needs to be like a character in his own movie, narrating the whole MCU. Oh, yeah. oh for like, I would yeah. take yeah. that. Trust me, Lilith. That's been. Perfectly monetized and marketized. We will we will have it on a Blu-ray uh, additional feature prior to Bugalore. Um, <laughs> I thought it was a good year for superhero movies, honestly. Mm-hmm. Except for the one. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. Oh, or, oh, what about Aquaman? I thought you were going to say Aquaman. I was <laughs> I told you, I thought that it was visually stunning. I thought that everybody except for Jason Momoa, because Jason Momoa was just being Jason Momoa, did a great job in the film. <laughs> I, I felt like Willem Dafoe was finally redeemed as a comic book character. So yeah, I think it was the problem, consensus the among the three of us that the movie was, was already Jason except for Momoa. Momoa's film. <laughs> it's like you can't say it was a great film except for Jason Momoa. He's the star of the film. I it agree. doesn't necessarily mean anything though. I liked Aquaman until Aquaman showed up. Well, I mean, I thought some of the Aquaman stuff was good. The young Aquaman stuff was great. Especially Wait, now that I know he's legal. No. <laughs> uh, not all of them are, Lola. There were like three the different The 16-year-old guys. one is actually in real life technically legal, so... <laughs> yeah, that's fine, Lola, but I'm just saying. Um, I liked everything about Aquaman that wasn't Jason Momoa, except... And this is... <laughs> oh, I was talking about this last thing I was going to talk about. So you want to want to know one of my biggest annoyances at Aquaman, and they did give a little gift to it, but it's still it's not acceptable. <laughs> we established earlier that swords do not pierce Aquaman's skin, which isn't how swords work. Just because you're bulletproof does not mean you're sword proof. Bulletproof. It's his skin density, though. No, it's okay. Okay. In the comic books, anyway. I don't know. No, 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 no. I understand that. So, okay. So, the reason why bullets bounce off a bulletproof vest, or at least flatten on a bulletproof vest, is because as they're moving, their momentum and their mass is less than the inertia, essentially, of the of of the vest. The vest is strong. But that's like getting mad at Superman for not getting uh, cut by a freaking sword that's not a kryptonite sword. It's kind of the same principle. Well, no, but he's different because he's freaking Superman. And and let me tell you this. And not for a, nothing, Atlantis is a mystical land outside yeah, of places yeah, yeah, where yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah, have yeah, to play. See, you're trying to argue, but you're just digging that hole deeper. Because then, at the at, when Manta decides he's going to kill Aquaman, he doesn't use fancy Atlantean swords. He takes his de- his granddad's knife. You know, I just looked no, this they up. Did something to oh. it does yeah. say equally a bulletproof vest may not may offer no protection to bladed weapons. Absolutely, so apparently no. there is Trust a difference. I, I do know how to kill people. I write. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you do this research. Bulletproof vests don't stop knives. That's right, people. Why do you show with people who know how to murder people? (laughs) Well, the reason is is because the knife doesn't collapse the way a bullet does. Because, first off, it's bigger. It's heavier. And it's being pushed consistently. Whereas, once you push back on a bullet, it says, bullet says, I'm out. Um, Yeah, that's number 16. uh, 25 (laughs) things you didn't know about bulletproof vests from Body Armor News. Yes. Bulletproof vests, not knife resistant. It, exactly. No, they don't stop knives. I've known this for years. Anyway, well, but now, now there is an out for this because there was already a wound in Aquaman's shoulder. And so you can argue he pushed it through the wound on Aquaman's shoulder. 
but it's a wound on his shoulder, so why would you try think that would kill him? More to the point, why would you try to kill him with your granddad's knife, which you already know is most likely just going to destroy the knife? Like I said, oh, they should have had the dad like be Black Manta and let the son die. I'm just saying. Oh, Subvert oh. expectations. Okay, Philip, we're moving on. <laughs> I, I no, but I mean, again, that's been like, bugging me since I saw it. I know, but Charlie, come on, take it out with James Wan, dude. I mean, <laughs> I agree with Charlie. I mean, I didn't like Aquaman. I thought maybe it was just me, but when Charlie came up with that, because basically in the beginning they try to give him a Peter Parker moment, but it, you know, that where, he, where he's going to learn with great power comes great responsibility. But instead of just stepping on but the burglar's way, he leaves, he leaves Manta's dad to drown and basically says, "Go f yourself." Yeah. And then, and that, and for what it's worth, that could have been his Peter Parker moment. But then he just says, "Well, I guess it was bad because now you're going to get hurt, pretty lady that I just met." <laughs> Although I met you once before, but uh, obviously I met you just as late, but I forgot about that. <laughs> like I, honestly, I liked his, I liked his armor suit in Justice League more than I liked the one that they came up with for Oh, uh, you like his in, suit, in Lily? Yeah. I don't even remember that. <laughs> and I was really pissed that his eyes were blue in Justice League, too. I'm glad they did correct that, at least. <laughs> his eyes were blue in Justice I really have not seen that film in so long. And, probably- <laughs> and I don't recommend you rewatch it, either. You don't need to revisit the trauma. I know I won't. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a strange film. Um, yeah, it wasn't like Batman Superman levels of trauma. Oh! Almost, though. Almost. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's a lot of right. talking and feeling, which I don't want in my. Which school. love is like? <laughs> I don't mind talking and feeling. I just want it to make sense. You know, it's like talking you know, and making sense. Is overrated. Look, love, one of my favorite shows. One of my favorite shows is Steven Universe, which okay. is a very talking, feeling show with very silly physics at play. Honestly, don't even get me started when you talk about gemology and why. Diamond shouldn't be in charge of things because diamonds are freaking common stones. They're only made rare by by Pressure. a monopoly. <laughs> what? No, they're made rare by the monopoly that controls diamond uh, availability. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing special about diamonds. They're literally just silicon that, well, not silicon, they're carbon that's been smushed down. And that's a whole other hey, thing. I'm a you millennial. Know. You're preaching to the choir. When you Superman like crushes you know. coal into a diamond, it's going to be a super small diamond. It's not going to be a big diamond. It's going to be tiny because all those atoms now have to be crushed into that diamond shape, which would be really freaking tiny. That's exactly. Just so that's, that's, that's exactly what I was saying. I've hated that since Superman. Was that Superman three or was that Superman two? And he makes the. I think it's Superman three. I think it was uh, your favorite movie. Yeah, Superman. Yeah, okay. yeah it was, it was it's definitely three. Yeah, but now it's a thing. Oh, he crushes coal into diamonds. Like. That's not how many atoms are in a block of coal. It's different structures of atoms. Don't you know your Avogadro's it's, number? It's not really our universe, though. It's not really our, the world outside our window, so I'll allow it. Moving on. <laughs> okay. Anyway, All but, right. um, yes. Moving on. So I'll get some control on this thing. No, you know what surprised me is a good movie, Charlie. I know you haven't seen it yet, but Bumblebee. I hear it's good. It's That's- good for a Transformers movie. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> it's the best live action Transformers so far. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what, here. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what, Lilith? This is the same reason why I was like, Aquaman has saved the DCEU. You'll never hear me say that. <laughs> <laughs> but Wonder you know, Woman 84 and Shazam might have saved the DCEU, but sorry, Jason yeah. Momoa, it wasn't you. You can go sit down now. Oh. <laughs> I'm just waiting for some satin tights to fight for my rights. Send him the Wonder Woman cosplay. I'm sure he'll wear it. No, Gwen Pool. <laughs> <laughs> you hey, you know what? If anyone wants to send me an outfit, I'll wear it on show. I- I'm happy to. I mean, you know. Come on, people. <laughs> First off, no one knows my size. It's very big. It's uh, spandex. <laughs> It'll be okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have stretched spandex to its spandex to its limits before, so I'm happy if someone has a costume they'd like me to wear on, 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 on show, I will happily wear it. Come on, people, he's got a January yeah, birthday. Time. He's got a January <laughs> birthday, come on. Yeah. How many weeks does he have to throw this gauntlet down before one of you picks it up? Come on. Yeah. Still thinks people are listening. <laughs> well, we have proof by the numbers. 
We do have numbers. Okay. I, I mean, we got more on the podcast than uh, YouTube, but I mean, yeah, people are listening. I, I, just, I, I just assume Rob just makes up those numbers. I mean, <laughs> anyway. Don't call Rob out because he's he so what he listens. Sometimes he does when we least expect it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just to hear. Oh, let me see what's going on. And he hears Charlie Esser. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. I, I, I like Bumble people, Bumble. If people, oh, you you like Bumblebee? That's good. I mean, I want to see Bumblebee. I actually, I'm really, I'm, I'm intrigued by Bumblebee. 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 I'm not sure if I'm intrigued <laughs> enough to spend money for it, or if I'll just wait for Netflix. I definitely say yeah. Sure. Or it's HBO. Because I've got like, I've got like three different. Streaming services, not even counting Tubi. Haley Steinfeld yeah. is a natural treasure. Fight me, nerds. Who? Haley Steinfeld. <laughs> she oh. is the girl that voiced the, 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 girl the voice of Gwen Stacy. And, and, yeah, she, and, was and she was in. Spider Gwen and Into the Spider Verse. Yeah. Okay. So, well, good for her then. Mazel tov. You, you're an actress who gets work. <laughs> don't ruin it. Don't be. Uh, don't be a chilly long. <laughs> Shots fired at Shelly Long after all this time? Man, but Ted Danson and Shelly Long. I love Christy Alley. Don't get me wrong. I love Christy Alley, but Shelly Long, it left a good time. Ted Danson, get Shelly Long some damn work. Man, that would cheer. You want Shelly? You know You know who gives Shelly Long work is freaking Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill reaches out. I don't know why, but Ed O'Neill says, you know what? You'll be my ex-wife. And that uh, that's Modern Family okay. with with my favorite uh, my favorite character, of course, Doc Sampson in it. <laughs> Phil Dunphy. I remembered his first name. It's Phil. Phil Dunphy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah, Ty Burrell played Doc Sampson, who'll be back in Electric Boogalore. Mark my word. Even in a three hour end game, which they're probably going to have. I don't know if they, I told you. I don't know if they're going to have room for Doc Sampson or. And they're going to have room for three hours, and the, the MCU nerds are going to freaking eat it up. <laughs> they're not, here's what I'm going to say. First off, you know, first off, Ty Burrell is the opening scene. And it's just Ty Burrell. He wants to Hulk on a, ca- a psychiatrist couch, you know. Exactly. It's going to be a replay of that after credit scene where, um, from Iron Man 3, where, like, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. is talking to um, uh, Banner about, oh, you know, all this stuff. Says, yeah. I'm not that kind of doctor. <laughs> it's going to be that, but it's actually going to be Ty Burrell saying, doctor. I am that kind of doctor. And you're messed up, young man. Um, let's try some hypnosis. Wee, 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 wee. And then we're going to get Professor Hulk the rest of the episode. And that's going to be fun. I told um, you, Joe, fix it. The Grey Hulk. Come on. Uh, well, I don't know if they're... They might do it there, because it's a perfectly good place to put in a Joe fix it. I want a Hulk in a, in a, in a, in a pinstripe suit beating on Thanos. Come on. Yeah, don't give me... You know, I'm still mad when John Byrne decided to make uh, Joe fix it green. Because he came back and he was being Joe Fix. It was actually Professor Hulk, but he was being playing as Joe Fix It. Like, who's gonna think Joe Fix It's green? That doesn't make sense. You mean Peter David? Well, Peter David. Oh, it was Peter David. That guy. He blasted out. We all. Yes, lie. that's right. Peter David, who we spoke to what a year or two ago, who called you a dumbass. Yes. <laughs> never let you know it, I love David. that. That's like a badge of honor. I told you. This time I'm ready for you, Peter. I'm ready. Oh, oh, he gave me a new mission tonight on Super Connectivity. I got to try to get a hold of John Byrne. Yeah, oh. give me, give me Byrne. Get John <laughs> Byrne on the phone. <laughs> I promise we won't talk about MC porn. Uh, um, I guess I'll just have to dive right out of that conversation then, since he's made that promise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry to bother you, Charlie. I can't believe you didn't mention it. What? Sorry to bother you, the movie. Oh, sorry to bother you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that was my a good film. One. That was. That was a head trip. <laughs> yeah. okay, here's my biggest... I was not expecting what happened at the end of that, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know what's great about that is you don't think it's a sci-fi film until the very end. And then you go back and go, oh, wait, yeah, it was always a sci-fi film. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but what I here's my biggest thing about it is there's no way not to think that the second half of the film is not a fever dream because he got yeah, hit in the head. Hit, yeah. 
It is all changes. A ball ball can can is heavy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, well, that's the twice we're in the freaking <laughs> mind interest. Of it. No, sorry to bother you. Um, who is in that? Um, Lakeith Stanfield from Atlanta. Okay. Um, Tessa Thompson from Thor. The Thor. Yeah, movies. I know it's Tessa. Tessa's great. Oh. And there's uh, the guy Glenn who plays Glenn from The Walking Dead. Yeah. And then it's Army Hammer as the evil business guy. I say let's get him for Lex Luthor since he does have a relationship with Warners. I'm just saying. I don't know what Army Hammer is. The Army Hammer is like always and Army Hammer, he's he's auditioned for Cap. He's auditioned for Batman. He's auditioned for everything. And they're always like, you're almost there. The man from agree. Uncle didn't take off, so you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> And he was great in in that Kevin Smith vehicle with the devil, as the devil's other son, um, Reaper. Oh, I remember Reaper. I love Reaper. You like one in ten people. <laughs> I was I was I was number eight. Yes, um, <laughs> we all get together every so often. It's a great reunion. It's great. Um, but no, I mean Army Hammer is honestly. He's, he is, he's the bootleg John Ham. Let's just let's just call it what it is. You know what it is? He's the guy who doesn't get the opportunities that he probably deserves. Maybe he's you know what? I, I think maybe he was a bad guy in the previous life. I was gonna say, was he Hitler in a past life or something? I wouldn't go that far because he's still a millionaire. He no, was the guy that beat Hitler. It's not like his that hard. It's like, <laughs> That's who he was. Yeah, you know, he's got like he's got like almost said dance and level fame. You know, he's oh. he wasn't. He's not being hurt by his life, but his life is like it's like you can tell this guy could have a better life, but he's not getting the breaks he needs. And that's you know nothing else says that life is all about chance and luck than Army Hammer's career. <laughs> you know. <laughs> If he had better luck, he'd have had a better career, but he hasn't had better luck yet. Did anybody see A Star is Born? No, but here it's good. The fifth remake. <laughs> the fifth one already? No, I'm just kidding. It's like the second or third remake. Like, yeah, I know it's the, at least the third, because there was Hollywood one... Hollywood is obsessed with that movie, but the and, guy not Brad, Bradley Cooper version was actually took me by surprise. The soundtrack is amazing, and I hope she does win an Oscar for... Um, not shallow, but uh, remember uh, us is, is the way we were. Yeah, that's a good song. Does she go by Lady Gaga in the film? Um, no. I mean, that's her name, but I think she actually... No, she no, didn't go by her Lady name. Her name. She actually has an, an actual name. Yeah, yeah Stephanie Giamatta. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's, <laughs> it's like, but no, in the credit, she is credited as Lady Gaga, because that's what everybody says. <laughs> uh, I don't know, you know. Um... Well, I mean, good for her. I mean, I, she's actually a very talented artist and creator. And but somebody. Bradley Cooper surprised me. Like, not only did he direct it, it was like, you can sing. And it didn't sound auto-tuned at all. So it really surprised me. He might be this next generation's Clint Eastwood. Because I think oh, he's a better was... director than he is an actor. Oh, might so be someday, nerds. So might someday be. soon he'll just be talking to an empty chair. No. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say let's not go there. I was gonna say I yes. still like Clint Eastwood despite that. Even though that last movie he just made has he had a scratch in my eye. I was like, he's an old guy. I'm just gonna let it slide this one time. He's on the way to see Stanley pretty soon, so I'm just gonna let it go. You know what though? That's the thing. It's like you, you can't at a certain point you can't say, Oh, he's old. It's like he's old means he came of age in the sixties. And you either know, you it, went one way, super liberal, or you went the other way. And this is well, it means why you, our went, you actually understood humanity as a concept, or you decided humanity was, you know, for posers like Ayn Rand. Like freaking Stephen <laughs> Ditko, who I'm not going to cry when he passes away. Oh, I <laughs> said it. Said, like, I, I take it from I it said it. Is. I'm but not gonna I, I, I can separate the art from the person, and I think he. I would have to look up more about him. I don't know about his. Uh, he's the human he's contract. Uh, not a, yeah, he's an objectivist. He's like hardcore oh. objectivist. He actually would not put in other superheroes to help Spider Man because he felt that if another superhero needed an, if a superhero needed another superhero to help them, that meant they weren't really super. That's so, weird. That's some well, yeah. right there. They weren't it into is... franchising and marketing and toys back then. Well, that was back when you could get away with being a crazy, not like freak. That's why Excellent. I'll say this much for uh, Alan Moore. He called Steve Ditko out <sighs> with Rorschach. 
Charlie no, Esser, Charlie Esser calling out Alan Moore. Take a drink. <laughs> this is me saying Wait, something nice like about Alan thing? Moore. It is. Oh. It is, madam. It is. <laughs> okay. I, I despise I Alan Moore <laughs> as an artist, except that he does speak truth to power on occasion. I believe it didn't. Uh, uh-huh. Wasn't was it this drop? Were you talking about Alan Moore? A sexually adventurous freak. No, that wasn't. That was what I know. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> but it no, equally yeah, applies. It no, what I said about Alan Moore is no. Okay, what I said about Alan Moore is not everything is a weird sex thing. Why is that not a drop? Oh, my big thing. I am big all over. So, oh, and people think that's a drop. I'm big all over. I do. Yeah, I am big all over. Oh. <laughs> but no, but that's the thing, is that Alan Moore is very sexually obsessive in the way a lot of artists get that way. And, and not for nothing, Gene Roddenberry was the same way, not sexually, but um, – he very much revisited the same concepts again and again and again and again. And it's like, as an artist, you need to branch out if you want to remain relevant, or you need to stop making art. You either have to say... But it is I'm, a thing called dominating your niche. Or maybe I've just been watching too many YouTube, certified YouTube marketing videos. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not well, sure. Let me put it this way. If it's a YouTube-related us uh, idea... So if you're in a niche and you're dominating your niche, that's talking about like a maybe a five-year, ten-year period at most. So yes, being the best guy who does this thing in that niche for ten years is perfect. If you're doing thirty years out, then what was that go revisit that really same idea I once did point. thirty years ago? It's not really him doing it at this point because he's been long gone for a while. It's, it's everybody not it's everybody being afraid to do new intellectual property. Just to be fair, who Alan Moore? Alan Moore still does new things. No, I'm talking about Gene Roddenberry. Oh, <laughs> yeah, like Gene Roddenberry. No, no, I'm actually talking about Gene Roddenberry as he as Gene Roddenberry. Yeah. Gene Roddenberry, and I'm not saying he did sexual things, but Gene Roddenberry. This was something that like the like uh, the uh, Brandon Braga <laughs> used to say about. You know, that what it was like the hard thing with him was like, you know, he, he wouldn't let you do anything different with Starfleet. It's like, no, Starfleet is this, and Starfleet is that, and let's go find God and say God is a child and then go home because we're better than God. That was that was literally that was his thing. And there's nothing wrong with that. It made a great set of stories and it wound up giving us Q. And Q as the godchild is really fantastic as a character that's evolved and grown over the century, over the years. Um, since the century set, well, technically two centuries, so yeah. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, no, that was Rodenberry's shtick. And, you know, you can go back to it for a while, but at a certain point, you got to say you need other, uh, you either have to let another artist tell the story. Or you have to find something new to say about your story. You can't always be going back to, oh, here's someone who was had a weird sex thing happen to them. Either good or Look bad. Look at you, Abby. Hashtag sophisticated suspense. Swamp thing, yes. <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on swamp thing. That's swamp just, thing. man. It's, you know, honestly, it's just Ellen Moore trying to make swamp thing be man thing and not doing a good job at it. <laughs> I'm just saying, Mad Thing was at the crossroads of Infinities and the Green long before freaking Marvel vs. DC. Long before Swamp Thing ever was. Mad Thing was always at the center of the universe, uh, this, the nexus of reality. And then uh, Alan was like, oh, that's something I could steal. Let me break that in my story. Like Let me go look at these old. But okay, we're gonna just move on. Let me go look at these old Carlton comics. Oh, here's a story I can, can we, steal. I'll write can we get, that one. Can we get past Charlie as we're talking about man thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, and just one more movie because I want it to be a franchise. Um, okay. Steve McQueen's Widows. If you haven't seen it, please go see it. It's got Viola Davis. It's got um Colin Farrell. It, and it's based on like an old British TV show. So mm-hmm. yeah, I thought it was very. Good and it's all well. It's all female ensemble cast that was actually good. So I say support it, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. You know, my only problem with uh, Steve McQueen films is that he has the name of another person. Yes, and it's like when Spike Jones does a film, I say, "Oh, I bet there's gonna be a lot of crazy uh, music in this." And it's like, "Oh, it's a different kind of, it's a different Spike Jones." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's always yeah. hard for me. 
And I know Spike Jones is dead, but it's like, oh, there's another Spike Jones who does other things. And it's like, oh, he doesn't he doesn't do the Spike Jones routine. And it's a little disappointing to me. So anytime I hear Steve McQueen making a film, I get all excited. Like, oh wait. Yes. Different but that Steve McQueen. McQueen is still very a very good reason to get excited, I have to say. I, no, I I'm not saying anything bad about Steve McQueen. I'm sure he's a great director. If you love uh, action, actually, he's your guy. I've been wanting to watch Widows, so you know, it's like you know, my biggest problem is like I can only see so many films and you know uh, <laughs> most of them have to do with superheroes for either for this reason or for the children's reason. So the children. <laughs> think of the children. <laughs> well, yeah. That's 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 a good thing about dogs is they don't want to go to movies. You can I don't even have a dog. I have a bunny, so <laughs> I thought you don't have dogs anymore. Okay. I gave them to my ex six months ago. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that I don't know. So bunnies are better. Clean, they still can't quiet, take them to the movies. Smart bunnies invest. <laughs> invest in bunnies, but not general wound work. <laughs> Watership down traumatized me. By the way, both the, the original new one and the, the old remake. One. I'm like, no, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> That surprised me that that they were like, "Hey, what can we make a film of? How about Watership Down?" I love buddies, but yeah, a little weird is like apparently Patrick Stewart did an Animal Farm remake a few years ago. Shut up, not need to find yeah. this. If he's not the pig, so help me goodness. Oh, of course he's the pig. I can't. I think he's actually Napoleon. Oh, uh, so if you want Patrick him. Stewart as the villain, I think yeah, Patrick Stewart did. Uh. I don't know if he plays Farmer Jones too. He might. That would be, actually that would make actually perfect sense if he's both oh, Farmer Jones and Napoleon. Me. Take that, but, Shatner. You leave yeah. my little baby Shat Shat alone. Oh my lord! Guess what? Yeah. Guess what? He's coming to the next Steel City Con. Guess when it is? The weekend of April thirteenth. Oh, oh, well, we uh, won't be available. I was gonna so. say well, the one day, the one weekend. I'm not in town. Although mm. I, th- I think I was looking on the website. He wants like. You get like an autograph and all kinds of stuff. Like I don't know if you get like a meet and greet or whatever. It's like two hundred and forty nine bucks for Shatner. It better be. Yeah, yeah, well, of course it is. Expensive. You know how much it costs to get Stan Lee's autograph? Was Please. It, well, it, now it's impossible. That will be yeah. Well, that's why you should have invested. <laughs> well, well, now cost you a Ouija board. <laughs> yeah. No, it was like because uh, I remember my friend Don actually. Um, he actually paid the extra. It was like three hundred bucks. Oh, was it for Stan? Was it? Yeah, for you get to you get you get your picture with Stan. Wait, you get nobody tells Stan. King King because he's still reasonable. So nobody's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, a little... you shut your mouth. <laughs> hey, 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 I, I, I kind of. I'm just in, saying. I kind of squeezed in a couple weeks ago on cultural icon. I kind of squeezed in a couple weeks ago when Tyler met Dean King. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. He's a great guy. I loved him on Ripley's Believe It or Not. Um. <laughs> Talk about a, a career where you know life's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves better. I'm just going to think. Yeah, about that. I don't know. He's, he gets political sometimes. I don't know. Well, that's kind of the same reason why I kind of feel bad for Jim Caviezel, because he's <laughs> kind of that way, too. Yeah, well, you got to be careful with that nonsense. You don't get into this business to get political, unless that's your business. You get into this business to make some coin. <laughs> Or to have a platform for your voice to be heard, you know. Because obviously we get political and we don't make coin. (laughs) But if that proves the theory, there you go. What what's that phrase that the the young kids say now? Go go woke go get woke go broke. (laughs) Uh, I thought it was uh. I don't care. The YouTube kids will get it. It's not for you, princess. Yes, um, it's all like young Charlie Esser. Moving along, Philip. Come on, come all on. Right, are we done? Get broke going, getting woke. Actually, I think it's when you yeah. stay asleep, you lose your keep. <laughs> oh, okay. Something. 19, TV oh. movie, nineteen ninety nine. Patrick Stewart is the voice of Napoleon in Animal Farm. Told you. It's that long ago, and I haven't I discovered it. Yeah. Oh my what? lord, Lilith, well, that's almost twenty years ago. You know what? You know. what? My gosh, that is don't hey, is it it? Yeah, I was in either middle school Amazon. or starting high school, so it's free on Amazon Prime right now, so <gasps> Ooh, that's why Prime Ooh. you gotta have a Prime account. Let's yeah. do a watch. Come on, guys. Bill, do you have Prime? Yes, Daniel got it. Yes, we have Prime. Sweet, okay. we're gonna do a watch. 
<laughs> You're oh, hell, the- our Amazonian okay. overlords. The greatest, yes! tra- the greatest transformer ever, Amazon Prime. <laughs> Careful not to get downloaded to USDA Prime. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, oh. Actually, you know, I have actually always modeled my life after Boxer, which is r- ridiculous. Um, but it is how right, I, I totally. I will work harder. Yeah, I will work harder. I love Boxer. Boxer was always my jam as a kid. It's yeah, fun. totally. When he uh, when he got yeah. sent to the glue factory, I was devastated, man. We yeah, don't know yeah. that. So wait, wait, did he just spoil something that, for Phil? Just bought the, 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 the wagon wait, no, you never read from Animal the Blue Farm? Factory. No, I did, I did. You don't know he oh, went to the Blue say. Factory. I was like, what kind of high school did you go to if you didn't have to read Animal, or read Animal Farm? My God. Yeah. All right, Phil. All right. Did you read Animal Farm? No, I did. I said I was just being a really dramatic Charlie yes, Esser. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. Unlike yourself. <laughs> I am never overly dramatic. I am the exact right about amount I'm of I am at the dramatic. exact level of dramatic. <laughs> All right, so my lap. Yes. Sorry. What? Kelsey Grammer is in this Animal Farm too. No, no, no! I heard about this when I just never went to go you dig around. So I love oh, Kelsey Grammer. Uh, he plays yeah. Farmer Jones, doesn't he? He's Snowball. Oh, he's Snowball. Mm. Oh, huh, how out of character for him. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would not see him as the Trotsky at all. All right, well, we're gonna have to watch it now. We'll have to. Yes. Make it so, Philip. All right, we've. <laughs> Okay, okay, Patrick Stewart. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to do a rewatch with the four of us. <laughs> that might have to be the next big round table. Okay, but before we go, I just wanted to say to everyone listening, thank you for listening, and everybody here, and along with those of us who couldn't be here tonight, this is like the best team in the business, people. Lilith, Charlie, Kristen, and like I said, our friends who couldn't be here, like Will. What about our Quasar podcast, The Quantum Zone? Matt. What about our Quasar podcast? And of course, our our, our closer, of King course, of the drops! Mr. Moz Manzor. Ah, I got you. <laughs> I just, I was, I'm so, that, that's probably the biggest disappointment that Moz wasn't here because he's the one I don't get to work with on a regular basis. I know, I gotta else. work that out, man. You know what, when we do, when we do the Gamma Cast uh, reboot, yeah, I'm gonna try and get you two together. Moz is like really hard to schedule. He has like a life. <laughs> and uh, see, you see, like, Will doesn't appreciate this, but like, Phil, you understand, when you have like people in your life, that you have to like be somewhere for. for. Yeah, like, there's a place you're at anyway. I'm sorry that I'm my own boss. I boss this my significant others are No, no, in my no, life. no. Nothing wrong with that. Honestly, love I'm envious of it. But I'm just saying, it's like like me and Phil, we know we're coming home at night. We know we're gonna be somewhere. But like if you can live your own life, you don't have to be home. You can be somewhere else. And so you can go do other things. So it's much harder to get those people into a into a it's thing, true. you know. When you you know, because honestly, if I didn't have to be here, there was there was <laughs> stuff I could be doing. <laughs> Trust me, there was there was a nice nice oh. certain thing I could have than that right now, but... Uh. Oh, Lord. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, again, again, people, best team in the business, but uh, all right, Kristen, where can people get a hold of you? Or to promote anything? Any thoughts? Let it rip. No. 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 no, I don't have... I don't do Twitter or anything. Because I'm... Promote the book! Promote the book! <laughs> oh. oh my goodness, there's a book! Promote yes. the book! Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. So. Hey, wait. You ago. have a book and you, you're not promoting it. She's so modest. Oh my god! I would have like so the t-shirt you today. of the book. The is like, the head. There's four people listening. They might want to buy your book. Just tell them about your book. Okay, they should buy it. Four people listening. Phil has a picture of it. It's about Dick Grayson. It came out a couple years ago when he was 75. He's going to be 80 soon. You should get it before then so you know everything. <laughs> so this is a great book Walker. about Dick Grayson? Yep. It's like a, is it like a, it's, yeah, it's a bunch of, uh, like, essays. Yep. Awesome. 
Well, I can't wait to read it because I will now go out and buy that. Oh, oh yes! Yeah, thanks! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that on Amazon? Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's bought. There we go. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, now that we got the humble one out of the way. All right, little <laughs> Hellfire, where can people uh, find you everywhere? <laughs> if you nerds want to fight me on Twitter, you can find me at Lil Hellfire. If you ha- want to hang out with me on the gram, you can find me at Lil Hellfire 86. If you want to talk my favorite, second favorite, superhero in red and blue, Superman or Smallville, you can find me on at Saving Podcast on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and or Twitter. I want to remind you guys that our um, Ultimate Spider Cast will be dropping very shortly. January so 1st. So please do check it out. And Philip, No, you skipped over Charlie Esser. Charles oh. <laughs> Esser. Well, we of course the best you... for last around here. I'm used to editing. Well, you, the can, always, you can always write to me. In that old-fashioned email way, where our mothers and our fathers once did, at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me tomorrow night as I live tweet Orville. And then later, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Gotham and all those wonderful shows on the Twitters at Charlie Esser. That's C-H-A-R-L-I-E. E-S-L-C-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! <sighs> and send us your thoughts. Uh, capes and Lunatics at gmail.com, facebook.com slash Capes and Lunatics at Capes Lunatics on Twitter, Capes and Lunatics on Instagram, and the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. 38-CAPES. <sighs> Not just one, 38. That's a lot of cakes. That is the exact right amount of cakes. <laughs> ah, but yes, everyone, join us in 2019. It's been a, gr- it's been a great year. It's going to be even greater next year. But for the last time in 2018, we have been the Capes. Ampersand. The Lunatics. And a real professor, a real doctor, Charlie Esser. <laughs> a real doctor, yes. I give nothing a but doctor. respect. The doctor is in. If you got a fever, we got the doctor. Not that, not that kind of doctor. <laughs> a, a doctor enough for a podcast. That's what I got to say. Man, too More bad. More of a doctor than anyone here. That's all I'm going to say. I was going to say, too bad Will wasn't here. I had another real professor ready to roll. Is he a doctor? I don't know. Or oh, is he just a master? <laughs> you know, that's, if it's that's good my... enough for Doctor Who, it's good enough for us. That's my theory about Doctor Who, is that there's only one degree given by Gallifrey University. There's a doctorate, and then there's a master, and then the bachelor is the third time lord. 